Welcome to the Great Podcast, a show where we take a look at the important men and women of history and decide once and for all if they are worth all of the fuss. My name is Jordan. And my name is David. Welcome back. It's been a long time. Kind of my fault, kind of not. Nah, it's the technology's fault. Yeah, so we recorded the entirety of this podcast Mm -hmm. a few weeks ago Mm -hmm. only to uh, find out afterwards that it was all going (laughs) while we were talking. audio files. Yeah. We, we thought we'd be clever by moving from a laptop to my big gaming machine for recording. And for some reason, even today, it just sounds all crackly and weird. So we're on a laptop again. Welcome back. But uh, yeah, so last time I asked you, do you remember anything from last week? And given that uh, the last one we truly recorded and uploaded was like two months ago. Right. Uh, do you remember anything about Vespasian? No. Okay. Other than the name being familiar. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so Year of the Four Emperors right mm-hmm. he won out that's right he sure did so galba otho and vitellius mm-hmm. duked it out for the throne after nero was assassinated right galba was an old grumpy man otho was a young up-and-comer former friend of nero mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. vitellius was a fat dude from the north who kind of just right. was like sure i'll be emperor yeah why not they're all dead right and vespasian then ruled for 10 years good did a great job got us out of the uh the horrible year of the four emperors the one blip in the peace, the Pax Romana mm-hmm, that has mm-hmm. been going on since Augustus. Uh, then Vespasian ruled for about a decade and died at the age of eight, uh, 69. Nice. I agree. But this new Flavian dynasty was just beginning. Vespasian had two sons. Can you recall their names? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible question. On this. <laughs> Titus and Domitian. Okay. Yeah, yes. that sounds familiar. <laughs> and we're going to be looking at both of them today because spoilers, they're both emperors. Woo! Right. And for the quality of the podcast, my memory is short, which is great. Yeah. Uh, chances was- are I forgot most of what we recorded the first time yeah so, and that's good because you know. I, I usually <laughs> like to like build suspense and surprise you a little but we'll see we'll see how much you remember yeah so let's begin with titus flavius vespasianus the oldest son it's born a little extra yeah they all have really long names yeah uh true. born december 30th 39 ce this was right at the beginning of caligula's reign mm-hmm uh, Wikipedia and Encyclopedia Britannica say 39 CE. Suetonius says 41 CE. I don't know. We're going to stick with 39. We're close enough. Uh, as Titus grew up, his father gained more and more favor with Caligula and then Claudius. In fact, Claudius and Vespasian became quite close friends, worked together for quite a while. In 51 CE, Vespasian was named consul for his work in Britannia. And Titus got a little brother that same year. This would be Domitian, born October 24th. 51 ce so there's a significant age gap over a decade right difference Mm -hmm. in age um so as uh vespasian and claudius were close titus and britannicus became best friends do you remember who britannicus was uh you know it's up in there The, the the son of the man who did a lot of good things in britain you know Yes, so. uh, Claudius. <laughs> there you go. It's Claudius' son. The go. one who was supposed to be the heir, but Agrippina, oh, yeah, I think. Yeah. Man, am I confusing the female names now? Couldn't tell you. But uh, the mother of Nero. <laughs> it's <laughs> been a minute and I don't go. have it in my notes. The mother of Nero was like, hey, how about Nero instead of your son? Right. And then right. Nero killed Britannicus. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of that day, remember he was, Britannicus was poisoned at a feast. Mm-hmm. So because Titus and Britannicus were such good friends... Titus had actually drank from the same cup that was poisoned. Right, that's right. And got quite sick, yeah. but survived. So that would be... A little less poison. You li- know? Yeah, a little bit harrowing of a situation. I hate it when my best friend gets poisoned and I also almost die. It's the worst. <sighs> right? And it's the guy who's in charge of everything that did it. Mm. Right? Just terrible. And he had a neck beard. Just oh, awful. Yeah. Come on. Nero was gross. <laughs> so... Titus was quite a gifted child and then quite a gifted young man. He served as military tribune in Germany and Britain. He wrote poetry in Greek and Latin. Will you quit playing with things? I can't. <laughs> Just dropping stuff repeatedly. We're That's not right. even two minutes. You don't in. even, you can't even hear it. It's fine. I you might be able to. Uh, so he wrote poetry in Greek and Latin. In 66 CE, at around 27 years old, Titus went to Judea with his father to put down the yes. great Jewish revolt. That is right. So being the right-hand man of his daddy, starting pretty early. Domitian, however, stayed behind. He would have been around 15 years old at the time, a mm-hmm. little too young to be going off to war. Um, he was the youngest child of Vespasian, and he did not get the same upbringing as his all-star brother. 
He was educated, of course, but not a proper court education right. like Titus. Yeah. He was never formally educated in military strategy like Titus, and he did not travel around with his father's military like well, Titus. Right, naturally. So Domitian was bright and well-spoken and ambitious, but he lacked the natural charisma of his father and his brother. And this is probably why his father didn't really seem mm -hmm. to have the time for him. There was a bitterness underlying Domitian's relationship with his father and As brother. As there should be. Yeah, both of whom were often away from home right. while the boy was growing up. So he was raised primarily by female family members, mm -hmm. which was, you know, looked down upon a little bit. He was too feminine and That's stuff. That's right, women. <laughs> Am I right? Gross. Who needs them? <laughs> uh, however, Domitian's mother and sister were also dead by the time that Titus was going off with his dad. So he was, he was uh, primarily in the care of his uncle Sabinus in mm -hmm. his later teenage years. Mm -hmm. Sabinus had been the urban prefect for the last 11 years of Nero's reign. Now, the urban prefect, you will definitely remember, is not the Praetorian prefect, but right. the Roman city guard mm -hmm, leader. Mm -hmm. Pretty important the role. chief of police, not the, not the chief of the secret service. There we right. go. There you go. There you go. Then Galba removed Sabinus. Mm -hmm. And Otho put him back. So yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. very quickly, he's like, you're not. Yes, you are. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right, great. <laughs> Sabinus was Vespasian's eyes and ears in Rome during the year of the four emperors. Mm -hmm. Titus and Vespasian had been gone for about three years fighting in Judea by the mm -hmm. time that this all broke out. Sabinus was also protecting his family in Rome, including Domitian. Right, as your good uncle would. Well, correct. Sabinus initially ordered his men to swear allegiance to Vitellius once he had defeated Otho, mm -hmm. because, you know, it was just going to be more slaughter if they didn't. Then the legions began declaring for Vespasian and marching on Rome right. without orders. Naturally. It was a good time. Domitian likely stayed very close to the urban guards along with the rest of the Flavian family members. Uh, the second battle of Bedraicum was a resounding victory for the Flavians. Uh, that was where uh, Vitellius essentially lost and mm -hmm. could no longer go on. Vitellius then tried to abdicate and made arrangements with Sabinus to surrender to the approaching legions. Uh, but then Vitellius's troops besieged Sabinus's position in the capital because they were like, no, if you give up, we don't have our jobs anymore. Oh, right. Yeah. That's dumb. Yeah. So we're not going to do that. Most of the family members were able to escape. Suetonius says this of Domitian's escape that night. He hid all night with the temple keeper, and at dawn, disguised as a follower of Isis, mingled with the priests of that motley superstition, and crossing the Tiber with a single friend, was hidden by the mother of one of his schoolfellows so effectively that though closely tracked, he remained undiscovered despite a thorough search. Strong work. Yeah, he got out of there. He uh, dressed up and ran away. Great job. Sabinus was not so lucky. He was dragged before Vitellius, mm. and the emperor really tried to spare him because he right. knew the writing was on the wall and he didn't want to kill Vespasian's brother yeah. when Vespasian was going to be coming soon. Right. Uh, but the German legions were off the leash. They didn't care what <laughs> Vitellius had to say, and they, blood. they brutally murdered Sabinus and dumped him where the filth of society were discarded. Ah, nice. Insult injury. Yep. But after Vespasian's men took the city, he was properly interred. Mm -hmm. Domitian had remained hidden in the city until Vespasian's men took control, and after the bloodshed, there was a lot of it, uh, he emerged and was hailed as Caesar by the men. Vitellius was then slaughtered, despite right. begging not to be. <laughs> the city was in ruins from battle and fire, and Domitian stepped forward, knowing that now was his time to take charge. Yeah. But Rome was in a state of anarchy, as one would expect, a full mm -hmm. year of civil war, plus being sacked and burned and all of that. Um, and Domitian was only 18. Mm-hmm. Then Musianus arrived with his eastern troops. Musianus. Musianus, baby. Yeah, what a name. Do you remember Musianus? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. Who, who is he? <laughs> well, uh, wasn't he sent to to take control until yeah! until Daddy Jordan came? Jordan remembered something. <laughs> yeah, so he was he was the governor in Syria mm. who initially didn't like Vespasian That's when he right, came over yeah. to Judea, but they became buddies. And uh, when Vespasian went to Alexandria mm -hmm. to take control of the food, mm -hmm. the grain supply, he sent Musianus to actually be leading, yeah. <laughs> even though there was legions in Vespasian's name attacking without orders. Yeah. <laughs> so Domitian held some authority and showed skill in delegation, but his power was deliberately limited by Musianus. Yeah. So another opportunity really lost. 
Domitian saw no opportunity for political advancement in Rome, so he thought he would try to emulate his brother Titus. Mm -hmm. He requested command of seven legions going out to put down small revolts. These were offshoots of the civil war because lots of smaller yeah. groups were like no nah, i don't want this seems like a big request Be like i know i know i don't have any experience hear me out give me seven legions though <laughs> i just want seven full <laughs> just armies seven you please know? it's like that's like half of our troops it's fine that's a little like, ambitious i get it be you okay know? big swing uh but you'll be surprised to know that this too was denied by musianus no way yeah and domitian was incensed his brother had done so many things mm -hmm. always at their father's side Domitian couldn't even get an opportunity to right. prove himself. It seems Vespasian may have even feared his younger son would seize power for himself. He sent a letter thanking Domitian for not overthrowing him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, hey, Good. I'm on my way to the capital. Thanks for not, uh, not claiming the throne for yourself. But soon Vespasian arrived in Rome and embarked on his 10 years of reconstruction. Titus finished taking Jerusalem and effectively brought the Jewish revolt to a close. Bar one settlement who held out for a few more years mm -hmm. because they were annoying. The sacking of Jerusalem saw mass slaughter of right. the populace. It was real bad. The second temple was destroyed and mm -hmm. the city was sacked. Josephus, the man we mentioned last time who was at that uh, battle yeah, yeah, and yeah. then surrendered at the mm -hmm. end, uh, he said that uh, a million people were slain in Jerusalem. It's a lot. More modern scholars put it somewhere around 100,000. Still a lot. Still a lot. Yeah. Still a very lot. Yeah. <laughs> Not a small number of human beings slaughtered. Um, then Titus made his way to Rome, stopping off in several cities along the way, as one does because travel was slow. Mm -hmm. In Memphis, which is down by Egypt, Tennessee, down in Egypt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dang. <laughs> we're gonna play some uh, country music here. <laughs> but uh, he took part in a ceremony to consecrate a sacred bull. This drew some negative attention. However, Titus swore uh, wore a diadem in the ceremony, mm. which uh, is a kingly kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, the Romans don't like kings. That's right. We're a republic. Yep, it's a republic. I don't, yeah. Emperors aren't kings. No, 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 no. No, yeah. no, 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 no. They don't have absolute authority and do whatever they want. Yeah. The second reason that this was bad is that it looked like he might be trying to steal power from mm -hmm. Vespasian. Mm -hmm. Also not good. We just had a civil war. No, thank you. Right. Titus quickly returned to Rome to reassure his father he was he loyal. Like, no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. I just, I, it looked pretty. I just wanted some jewelry. Misunderstanding. It's okay, dad. It's fine. Titus then proved himself mm -hmm. very quickly. He, be, he remained Vespasian's right-hand man. Very quickly, he was made Vespasian's secretary and would serve seven consulships during Vespasian's reign. That's a lot. That is a lot. He also received a triumph for his work mm. in Judea. Uh, so extravagant were the celebrations that the Arch of Titus was constructed. It displays the army marching into Rome with the valuable loot from the east, including a menorah and stuff. Nice. It's, yeah, it's a very, very famous arch because it was a big deal at the time that they won that battle. Yeah. To top it off, Titus was quickly appointed Praetorian Prefect. Mm. This helped to ensure the guards would not overthrow Vespasian. Right, yeah. Uh, the heir was their boss yeah. so he was yeah. already in line and vespasian was old so yeah, the son and right hand man for life yep yeah quote from Suetonius: when his father and brother appeared in public mounted on their official chairs he followed behind in a litter sorry forgot to mention this is domitian yeah <laughs> and took part in their judean triumph riding the customary white horse moreover of his six consulships prior to becoming emperor he only held one regular one in 73 a.d and then simply because his brother recommended him in place of himself so oh, yeah. that all to say that Domitian is still being overlooked. Yeah, right. He's Majorly. Still just, just there. Yep. And only when Titus deems, you know, okay, mm -hmm. fine, I'll give you something, does he get kind of a token role. Yeah, right. Just kind of yep. for show. He, Domitian was given no authority and spent much of his father's reign focusing on art and literature. Perhaps, he thought, once Titus was emperor, he would be given his chance. Mm -hmm. Pretty good hope. You remember that Vespasian was known for being pretty chill. Yeah. Suetonius says that he never killed anyone who didn't deserve right, who it. who didn't deserve it. And he felt bad whenever he had to kill anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's all because Titus was all too happy to fill the role of killing people. <laughs> uh, he was known to be a cruel and ruthless protector of his family. Any potential threat could be met with immediate execution at Titus's own mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. Pretty bad. Uh, Titus also drew some condemnation for his love of an Eastern queen. Berenice, Berenice, something to that effect. Can't be having relations with those foreign women. Yeah, you don't can't want do that. that. You do not want that. She was a sister to a client king who had mm -hmm. helped Rome in the Jewish war. 
And in 75 CE, she came to Rome to live as Titus's wife. Oof. Which uh, people stank of Antony and Cleopatra. That's right. And no. That didn't turn out well. <laughs> no. Soon he was forced to send her away by Vespasian. He mm-hmm. was like, you can't do that. And this, this sullied his reputation a bit. Right. Titus ruled by his father's side for almost a decade. Mm-hmm. In 79 CE, Vespasian died in his summer home. Titus was then immediately declared emperor. Very smooth transition of power. Yeah. Cassius Dio tells us his first order of business was to put an end to the treason trials once and for all. I mean, I've heard it before. Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we said we said once and bu- once and for all a couple times. Yeah, know, you yeah. Know, like get rid of them <laughs> until I need to kill people. Right. <laughs> Fortunately, this is it. Okay. The actual treason trials that were written into law. Right are gone they didn't just hide the paper this time they right. actually destroyed it because vespasian wasn't using them mm-hmm. but they were still on the books right and you'll find uh that quote unquote the books in rome not that great yeah <laughs> for, <laughs> for several hundred years it's it's like we have to wait until justinian comes along to actually fix all of it yeah by being like okay there's thousand years of laws and yeah, we need rulings. to like put this um, in order somewhere here yep. <laughs> it's bad so anyway Despite this, many feared that Titus was going to become a tyrant. He was the cruel uh, executioner Mm -hmm. of Vespasian, and he had slaughtered Judea Mm -hmm. and blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. Uh, But the histories tell us that he was a different man as emperor. He was calm, forgiving, and compassionate. His younger years as a crazy partier were put behind him, and he was 39 by this point. People do change. Fair enough. Also, a different role, you know? His father was the emperor. Now he's going to probably, he liked his emperor. His father was a good leader. So he probably must be like, well, this is my job now. Let's uh, let's emulate that more. Great, great point. Because Dio says the same thing. Yeah. This may have been because he had really undergone a change. Indeed, for men to wield power as assistance to another is a very different thing from exercising independent authority mm-hmm. themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the theory is that he became ruler and he's like, I want to rule well. Yeah. Um, we'll get into it a bit more later. But Titus said. Uh, set about ruling he put no one to death without proper cause and no senators died under mm-hmm. his reign he was careful with money and governed efficiently domitian tired of ceremonial roles in government requested a larger role it's like hey bro listen i've been sitting here for a while could i just like please do something with responsibility pretty please <laughs> like i just just something can i do something and titus assured him more responsibility would come soon Thanks, bro. And he kept reassuring him <laughs> of this. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Definitely soon. The next year, I swear. You're gonna you're you gonna that. get it, man. <laughs> then Nero returned. <gasps> Out in the east, rumors abounded that the former emperor was still alive. Okay. He traveled and sang while playing a liar. Oh, yeah, that's right. Recruiting men to help <laughs> reinstate him to the throne. Naturally. Eventually, this revenant arrived at the door of the Parthian king. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you may remember that Nero, one really good thing he did was he's got a peace deal with the Parthians Mm -hmm. by saying, yo, you will name the king of Armenia. That's right. And and Roman emperors will approve. Yeah. That way we don't have to keep fighting over it. Right. And this lasted for a long time. That was like like the border province or whatever. Yep. Armenia was between the two empires Mm -hmm. and it was always who's in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the client yeah, state right. going to this time? So now it was kind of shared. Mm-hmm. So for returning Armenia to the Parthians, Nero demanded help overthrowing Titus. However, it soon became clear that this man, though similar in appearance and voice to Nero, was impost- was an imposter. And he Who was thought? quickly executed <laughs> by the Parthians. <laughs> He's like, nah, nah, you don't, you don't pass the test, man. <laughs> nah, vibe check, vibe check. <laughs> Uh, The legend of Nero's return would hold sway for many centuries to come. He was actually quite uh, popular in the East. Remember remember when the soldiers said, is it such a bad thing to die when he was trying to flee? Mm -hmm. He was trying to flee to the East. Oh, yeah, to the supporters. They actually, like, they were more um, on board with living men being gods. Oh, okay. So, like, God kings. When he was like, I am the god. Right. Yeah. Yeah, They were like, oh, for sure. Definitely. But didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So that's sorted. Titus continued with his rule. The Britons were getting feisty again. Mm-hmm. Remember, his father had really been working to kind mm-hmm. of put it all down and keep that conquest going. A man named Agricola spent many years on the island conquering and putting down rebellions. Mm-hmm. Agricola was the father-in-law of one of our primary sources, Tacitus. Yeah. So we actually don't have a ton written on Titus and Domitian from Tacitus, except from the perspective of Agricola. He wrote an entire book on Agricola. Uh, but Agricola sorted those pesky rebels out. No problem. Mm-hmm. And now a detour. 
uh, to meet the two Plinies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pliny the Elder and Mm -hmm. Pliny the Younger. Mm -hmm, This is mm -hmm. uncle and nephew. That's right. The Elder was a well-known philosopher, historian, and writer. He wrote histories on the German wars and his natural history, which was kind of like an ancient encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. Much of his works are lost, unfortunately, but Suetonius, Tacitus, and Plutarch all used his books as references, so we know a bit about them. Uh, He was also a military and naval commander and was good friends with Vespasian. Okay. The younger was around 17 at the time in 79 CE, and they were just hanging out, Mm -hmm. just chilling. And then the earth started to rumble. Right. A lot. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot. And the waves started getting bigger. And what is... That is a lot of smoke. Ground is angry. Across the the water there. The younger looked across the Bay of Naples and saw a strange cloud rolling over the mountains. Mm -hmm. And it was emitting from Mount Vesuvius. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. We all know this story. Yeah, the volcano was erupting violently. The cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum were quickly covered in pyroclastic flows. Mm-hmm. Huge plumes of gas and earth shot into the atmosphere. Basically, hellfire rained oh, down. Yeah. And poison. Oh, Just yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> Thousands were engulfed and cased forever, frozen in their final moments. It's one of the amazing. I want to go there. Yeah, I, I need to get really there cool. and see it because God, the pictures don't. I'm sure don't do it justice. Right. Yeah. Um. And for those unfamiliar, it it basically preserved these two cities as they mm-hmm. were, uh, two thousand years ago. Right. It's just so cool. Pompeii, the much well more known city. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Um. So Pliny the Elder was in charge of the fleet nearby at this mm-hmm. time, and fearing for a friend that he had living near the blast radius, he co- coordinated a rescue mission, which is very brave. Yeah. Like let's. <laughs> hey, yo. Look, we're gonna sail towards the angry Earth hole right yeah, there. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> hey, is that lava? What's lava? I don't, don't know. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh. So li- uh, through the ash and wind and earthquakes, he sailed across the bay to save those he could. In a letter from Pliny the Younger to Tacitus 25 mm-hmm. years later, this is where we get these stories, the elder ship approached the shore. Pumice and hot ash was falling on them, and the captain advised, yo, we need to turn back. Right. This is getting really bad. Get out of but here. But Pliny the Elder declared, fortune favors the bold. <laughs> and I'm so sad that our original recording oh, yeah. didn't <laughs> stick. I might put it in here because I've still got it. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, before we did the first recording of this, made a really botched version of that it was, quote. It was great. Yeah, I don't even remember what you said, but it was not either. correct. It was slightly on purpose. I'm going to play it right not. here just so you guys yeah. can hear what he said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just curious. Just say that quote again. <laughs> Fortune powers the favor, you know? <laughs> Fortune does, in fact, power the favor. Old saying. <laughs> okay. Anyway. That's right. It was a funny coincidence. Words but so a wise. Upon their arrival, it became clear that rescue wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. It was really bad. The group soon retreated to the ship, but Pliny uh, apparently suffered from asthma his whole life and was suffering very badly from respiratory problems. A cloud of toxic gas engulfed the group. As you mentioned, the air was poisonous Mm -hmm. at this point, and Pliny was left behind. His body was found days later. Mm. Or, if you believe modern historians, Pliny died of a heart attack some nowhere near Vesuvius. So. Oh, just died later? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't huh. I don't know. I didn't dig into it deep enough to know why they don't believe this anymore. But, you right. know, Pliny the Younger was probably pumping up his uncle. Which, eh, you yeah. know, whatever. That's cool fair. story. Needless to say, this was catastrophic. Yeah. This was horrific. And this was just months into Titus' reign. It's like a huge natural disaster going on Yeah, Yeah, in the ancient world, Mm -hmm. too. Uh, But Titus coordinated relief efforts and spent large sums of his own money to aid those who lost everything. Good for you. Two ex-consuls were put in charge of the relief, so he had qualified men leading it. He also visited Pompeii shortly after the eruption and the following year. Mm -hmm. So, good on him. He's doing the right thing. He's not George Bush. Right. <laughs> <laughs> in 80 CE, just just uh, after the one year mark of Titus's reign, a fire broke out in Rome. Mm-hmm. Not as bad as the Great Fire under Nero, but still many buildings were destroyed, including Agrippa's Pantheon. So I mentioned that Agrippa had built the Pantheon, yeah. but not the one that we know of today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Titus again responded well and did all he could to assist. Mm-hmm. Suetonius tells us that around this time a plague broke out. Just everything is happening All to this of it. man. Like, yep. Uh, little is known about this, but clearly Titus was off to a rocky start through no fault of his own. Yeah, right. No, just just luck. Yeah. Bad luck. And throughout this tumultuous time, Domitian continued to request offices and responsibilities from his brother. Right. To no avail. Let me help. <laughs> 
You, you look like you get your hands full, bro. No, look, that's can fine. I can I help? <laughs> All right, but then also in eighty CE, the Flavian Amphitheater was completed. This is the Colosseum. Nice. Yep. So that's why a lot of people consider it Titus's thing, but his dad mm, actually started, started it. Started it, yeah. Games were held for 100 days to celebrate and probably to get people to forget about all the catastrophes right, happening let's around them. Distract the populace real quick. Yep, gladiators fought, wild beasts were let out for hunts, the theater was flooded for mock naval battles, mm-hmm. and people were given wooden balls with prizes inscribed on them. Nice. Yeah. It's like the t-shirt cannon. Yeah, <laughs> but ancient and yeah. splintery. Right. So the Temple of Vespasian and Titus was also begun under Titus's reign, though it would not be completed until after his death. After the games were done, Titus set out on a short trip outside Rome, and soon he developed a fever. <gasps> he was rushed to the family's summer home, where his father had died, oh, and there he breathed his last words, I have made but one mistake. What was it? Yeah. What was exactly. the mistake? <laughs> Many people question um, what this meant. Uh, there's theories that it was not killing Domitian, oh. like getting rid of him. Um, some think it might have been that he didn't have an heir at this mm, time. Yeah. Might have been about the Egyptian, or not Egyptian, the Eastern wife. No one knows. It's yeah, one of the great I think mysteries. The mistake was probably not training Domitian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, could have been. Maybe not what he thought, but I think real the real mistake was that. Yeah. Maybe 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 it was. Maybe him and his father just formed this unhealthy fear of Domitian. I would. And we're just like, I don't know. <laughs> is he okay what know. are we gonna do with him what are we gonna do with him <laughs> so titus died on september 13th 81 ce only two years and two months into his reign that's a rough one for him man yeah he's kind of the, the great what apart. if yeah but dio makes a good point um his satisfactory record may also have been due to the fact that he survived his accession but a very short time for he was thus given no opportunity for wrongdoing and maintained that Augustus would never have been loved had he lived a shorter time, nor Titus had he lived longer. Yeah, I mean, which makes sense. He also had his hands full the entire time. So he couldn't really He didn't have the opportunity to be bored, to do weird things. Right. He's just like, oh, everything's falling apart. I guess I just kind of take care of it. Right. Yeah. It's it's an interesting point, too, about Augustus. Like, if Augustus had died 10 years in, he probably would have been viewed as a tyrant, and Mm -hmm. everyone would have hated him. Right, because they wouldn't have seen the outcome of everything. And then had Titus lived longer, the theory is he would have become a tyrant or something, Mm -hmm. and it wouldn't have been good. Who knows? It's one of the great mysteries. But he died. And now it's Domitian's turn. Finally, I'm so glad that he has all the opportunities he asked for and is ready and experienced and just, just really good to step into that role. He is so prepared. <laughs> so Dio tells us that Domitian might have killed Titus, though right. probably not. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense. He may also have hastened Titus's death by placing him in a chest full of snow while he was ill. It'll help. I promise. You're really warm. This will help cool you down. That might have been what he said. Which isn't actually unfounded. It's not the worst. medical science. But you when you put someone fever, you know? in, in snow and then leave, it could, it could have made it worse. Whatever the case, Domitian rushed back to Rome before Titus died, because it was clear he was mm-hmm. going to. Uh, the Praetorians declared for him very quickly. And the next day, with Titus dead, the Senate Senate confirmed Domitian's power. And Domitian's first act was to deify his brother. What a nice guy. Super nice. Yeah, he loved him so much. Well, the people did. Yeah, it's true. So like that. So at long last, after decades of living in Titus' shadow, Domitian was in charge. Mm. Now was his time to run the empire as it should be run. That's right. This meant no more facade of senatorial power. (laughs) <laughs> what what is this for a century emperors had shown deference to yeah. the senate yeah domitian saw this as an empty formality he instead saw his right to rule as divine and absolute he alone was in charge which is true yep. right the senate didn't hasn't had actual power in a minute Correct. So. Yep. It's been over a century. <laughs> right. Of just, you guys aren't actually in charge. Yeah, you don't do anything. Y'all just kind of sit around and talk and pretend to pass whatever the heck you do. And then I come in, Emperor comes in, says, hey, I have this new law. Cool. All yeah. right. <laughs> there it is. And then so Domitian's just like, I'm not going to come tell you guys. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to do it. Right. Cool. I bet they liked that. He moved the official seat of government to the Imperial Palace uh, rather than the Senate House. And now is a good time to ask you, who is writing all the histories we read today? 
Senators. Sure do. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the Senate did not like Domitian, and right. their writings prove that. So we will want to, as always, take mm-hmm. a large grain of salt. Right. The 30-year-old emperor set about ruling right away. Mm-hmm. He was not playing. Uh, he increased the common soldier's pay significantly. Smart. The first time since Augustus. Yeah, save your own butt. I like that. Yup. According to the historian Brian Jones, he increased their pay by one third in a lot. 84 CE. Yeah. I'll take a third raise. That'd be nice. Yeah. And, you know, the army was not small mm-hmm. at this point. So no. this is a lot of money. This, along with his hands on approach to ruling, made the common soldier love him, mm-hmm. which is a kind of a good thing. Yeah. When you're an absolute monarch, the army is your best friend. The man was not a people person, though. As I mentioned, he mm-hmm. didn't have the charisma of Vespasian and Titus. He was very um, brief, curt, yeah. uh, rude just at times. Just yeah, like, this just is what we're doing. Do this. Don't, yeah, don't shut care. up. Don't no. tell me all this <laughs> dumb. De- what do this? Go. Right. He preferred to spend time by himself. Pleasantries and platitudes were a waste of time mm-hmm. by his viewpoint, and he was suspicious of everyone, which mm-hmm. kind of makes sense given his upbringing. Yeah. His paranoia was fairly tame in the early years, but uh, later in his reign, uh, he had shiny metal mirrors hung up yeah. around the palace so that he could see behind him. <laughs> Not a bad idea. I get it. Not a terrible Fine. idea. Despite the hate he will soon get, re- writers of the time cannot overlook his effectiveness. Mm-hmm. Suetonius, who I forgot to mention, this will be the last time we have Suetonius. That's right. The last one he wrote about was mm-hmm. Domitian. He was 11 when mm-hmm. Domitian came to power. So he's alive during this. Um, he says this. He administered justice scrupulously and conscientiously, frequently holding special sittings on the tribunal in the forum. He degraded jurors who accepted bribes together with all their associates. He took such care to exercise restraint over the city officials and the governors of the provinces that at no time were there more were they more honest or just. But Suetonius also says this. At the start of his reign, he spent hours alone each day doing nothing but catch flies and stab them with a razor-sharp pen, which prompted a show of wit from Vibius Crispus, who, when asked if there was anyone with Caesar, replied, no, not even a fly. (laughs) So (laughs) so which is it? Is he a thorough administrator or a lackwit who kills flies for fun? Yeah, right. Like, to get get like a witty saying from, ah, yeah, come on. (laughs) Yeah, it is... I have had a very hard time with my research because of how much I go, really? Yeah. I can't just take it at face value because a lot of it I go, I don't know about that. Pretty biased. This Mm -hmm. man comes in and says, your existence isn't needed. Right. (laughs) But then to say he like, you know, the least corruption you've ever Mm -hmm. had and things were running really smoothly, but he was crazy. It's like, well, okay, it's one or the other probably. Unlike many emperors who couldn't be bothered with the day-to-day administration mm-hmm. of government, Domitian had eyes and hands on everything. A micromanager, huh? A micromanager. Okay. Taxes, law, public health, military affairs. He was in charge of it all. He wanted to see everything. I mean, fair enough, I yep. guess. Like, you're the absolute ruler, so. Yep. Those put in high offices were put there for their diligence and loyalty. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy. Vespasian and Titus had put family members in charge for important roles so that they could have proper security. Mm-hmm. Domitian wasn't close with his family, as we have seen. Uh, He preferred people who kissed his ass and got the job done. I mean, yeah, you know, I don't blame him. It's a good way to do it. And again, the senators hated this. Meritocracy was not great for the nobility Mm -hmm. who were used to everything being handed them. Yeah, right. We have to try. Do you know my family name? My great grandfather (laughs) fought in this war. Why can I I not be consul? I don't understand. I don't have to do anything. That's my name. What do you. (laughs) Yeah, so this meant members of the equestrian rank. Oh my God. We're getting roles historically given to senators. How dare he? Dude, this dude just asking How for it dare he give people who are good at the job the job then on top of all of this domitian was often out of rome his oh, need to micromanage man. took him all over the empire uh it was clear now that the seat of government was not in rome mm-hmm. it was wherever the emperor was Finally. and again the senate hated this yeah not happy yeah at all so because a lot of stuff happens um i'm gonna do kind of an in order Here's, you know, year by year, here's what mm-hmm, was going mm-hmm. on, and then we'll cover everything in our rounds at the end. So let's look at what he did during his reign. So in 81, Titus died and Domitian became emperor. Mm-hmm. In 82, 
Domitian headed up to Gaul to conduct a census. And I'm going to put those in big quotes to com- conduct a census. There, he quickly formed a new legion and oh. fought a small war with the Chatai. Okay. Uh, this was quickly won, and he returned home for a triumph in 83. We'll go for all this military stuff. We'll mm-hmm, go into more mm-hmm. detail in Mastery of Military Might. It, also in 83, for reasons unknown to history, or maybe not, we're not entirely sure, uh, he briefly exiled his wife. Oh, just and, briefly, though? Yep. Okay. It may have been an affair. And at some point, his one and only son died. We mm. don't even know his name. That's unfortunate. Yeah. So Tony said it was in 82, but I saw elsewhere that mm. it was in 83. Um, we have de- coins depicting mm-hmm. this young boy, but yeah, we don't know his name and he died. Domitian quickly deified him. Mm-hmm. So he clearly has like some love for yeah. those close to him. In 84, Agricola, the one who's up in Britain, was wrapping up his fighting. He'd attacked Ireland and Scotland. Um, could not fully subjugate the Caledonians, who were the people in Scotland at the time, but he was doing his best. And then in 85, Agricola was recalled from Britain. Mm-hmm. His glory was getting ahead of Domitian's, right. at least according to Tacitus. Don't want to be more popular than me. Yep. However, the famous war hero was awarded triumphal regalia. Remember, that means he got the cool t-shirt, mm-hmm. even the cool, though you can't have an actual cool t-shirt. Yeah. I like that. I got to give credit to the, the boys over at Totalis Rankin for that joke. <laughs> He would never hold public office again, however. Yeah. That's yep. Fair. You did a good job. Go retire. So also in 85, war broke out with the tribes from the north and east of the Danube River. Okay. The Dacians pressed into the province of Moesia. This would be around modern Serbia, Kosovo, and Albania. Mm-hmm. This was a major invasion. And again, we'll talk more about that later. By this point, four years into his reign, Domitian had been fairly lenient and just in his mm-hmm. governance. But financial issues will cause anyone to start acting out. Oh, yeah. So, Desperation starts to set in a little bit. <laughs> yup. These wars were costly. And soon he began confiscating wealth from powerful men on mostly trumped up charges. Right. Then in 87, with the Dacian War still going on, Domitian being a bit less pleasant with each passing day, a conspiracy was found among some high ranking senators. Mm-hmm. We only have a small bit about it, but those found guilty were quickly executed. So now it's getting to be like, oh, the these these senators who don't have jobs anymore are getting a little feisty. Right, yeah. Hmm. Getting a little bold. Not good. So, 88, the Dacians were defeated at Taipei, I think is how you say that. Close Thank enough, Thank goodness the Danube region was finally secure. I'm sure that mm-hmm. area of the empire will never be a problem again. Never. No, once you secure any type of the border, it's good. Yeah, it's fine. It'll be Set. totally fine. Yeah. Set in stone. There's never fight backs. Fightbacks? Fightbacks. Yeah, we're going to keep that. Fightbacks, yep. (laughs) Coined it. In January of 89, the governor of Germania Superior rose up in revolt. Remember, Germania is where all these revolts are coming Mm -hmm. from. Yeah. Just not a good time. This man was Lucius Antonius Saturninus. The, yeah, you laugh at all these long ass <laughs> names so much <laughs> yeah the reason is not fully known uh but by this point many were unhappy with the mission's handling of military affairs he had halted the conquest of britannia to pull troops mm-hmm. for the dacian war the dacian war was resolved in an unsatisfying way mm-hmm. according to the roman people right and the german frontier had been fortified rather than pushing in and conquering more germans That's right we're rome we we conquer things we don't make things we don't stabilize our empire right. we just go conquer more stuff despite almost a hundred years of policy being like maybe we don't push in anymore maybe yeah. we'll, we'll go to britain you know. but everywhere else let's just maintain the border yeah people are dumb always so this revolt was narrow in scope uh the two legions of germania superior would be no match for the combined might of germania inferior mm-hmm. ratia and spain which was under a man named trajan hmm. and Domitian with the praetorian guards mm-hmm. the rebels were not completely alone however Domitian's old friends, the Chatai, were ready to support anyone willing to stick a sword in the emperor. That was <laughs> the small group that when he initially went up to Gaul for a census oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, he that he attacked. Yep. So they were like, hey, we're going to come help. Uh, but Suetonius tells us this. And remember, this was in January. Mm-hmm. Quote, by a remakeable, 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 by a remarkable stroke of luck on the eve of battle, the Rhine thawed and prevented Antonius's barbarian allies from crossing the ice to join him. Ah, so it's somehow that's unfortunate in germany in january the rhine thawed and they couldn't cross to help the yeah, fighting it's a rough life there the rebellion was quickly defeated and saturninus and his officers were executed the rebellious legions were sent to the danube front as punishment mm-hmm. because that's where all the fighting was happening 
Those who helped put down the revolt were greatly rewarded. A man named Nerva was made consul with Domitian the next year, implying that he may have uh, helped uncover this plot. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's also rumors, according to Suetonius, that uh, Nerva had sexually abused Domitian in his youth. Yeah, kind of a weird extra thing that's strange. Yeah, Yeah, just kind of throw that in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and remember that homosexuality is cool, fine, whatever, as long as you're the top, not the bottom. That's right, and it's not, you know. So it might have been a slight against Domitian, Mm -hmm. and that's why they say. Right, just trying to tarnish him a little bit. Around the same time in 89, the Macromani in the Ezigis, not how you say that at all, attacked the Danube frontier. Mm Mm-hmm. Wait, no, 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 but it was secure, though. They, it's totally secure. Yeah, no, they can't. They can't be attacked again. I'm sure by this point, Domitian was getting really suspicious and cross with the ruling class. Uh, they're mad about the wars. Mm-hmm. They're mad he took away their authority. Right. They're mad he's paying the soldiers significantly more than they've ever been paid. Right. And now a governor has revolted during a years-long defensive war against the barbarians. Mm-hmm. I'd be pissed, too. Yeah. Then, in 92, just to you know, put things a little bit more at ease. The Imperial Palace he had built building was completed. Let's go. Woo! And then the Izigis or whatever were defeated and the 41-year-old emperor could finally relax. Sure. But relaxing was not <laughs> in Domitian's nature. His paranoid and anxiety or paranoia and anxiety finally reached a boiling point. Mm-hmm. Uh, if these damn knights and senators were going to keep plotting, even though many of them probably weren't, right. he was going to make them pay. And this is where Domitian's quote unquote reign of terror began. Okay. Hard to tell how accurate this is, but rewrite the treason trials. Yeah. Bring, <laughs> let's bring them back. Bring, bring them back. <laughs> wait, 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 Titus got rid of those? Hey, can we write that back in the law? <laughs> uh so in ninety five, Flavius Clemens was executed. And Flavius tells you that these two were related. Okay. Uh, this was Domitian's cousin, and as Domitian had no sons, mm-hmm. Clemens's sons were Domitian's heirs at this point. Gotcha. And maybe not all, I couldn't find out if it was actually official, mm-hmm. but kind of assumed. Right. Um, and then near the end of 96, Domitian died. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Which we will look into in much greater detail in a bit. Right. So that is that is it. That is the about 15 year reign of Domitian. Before we go diving deep, what do you think of him? He's an interesting one. I don't know. Probably. He had he had no no right to be a good leader. So I don't know. It it makes good for him. I think he did a <laughs> good, good I think he did a good job with the the lack of experience and training that he was really trying to get his whole life that just yeah. couldn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, oh, you you actually are competent? Weird. Yeah, no, <sighs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure he studied his father and brother closely right he was around probably what it was yeah for sure Even though he didn't have any like first-hand experience he saw all of it yep. or a lot of it anyways definitely all right well let's take a look our first round let's write the details mastery of military might so aside from his first uh bit attacking the chatai mm-hmm. the mission was always on the defending side mm-hmm. Uh, this is strange for Roman emperors. Right. Um, Rome has been the aggressor for centuries. Correct. Let's <laughs> just expand forever. That's not a problem, right? Right. Now the very slow tide of barbarian invasion begins. Centuries of these and other tribes mm-hmm. pushing into the empire will follow. Yeah. And in all, he does all right. Um, even if his decisions were not popular at the time. Also, he was loved by his troops. Mm-hmm. Uh, he raised their pay significantly uh, by one third. So they went from nine gold pieces a year to 12 gold pieces a year. Not sure exactly where they got those numbers, but yeah, some, some historian had those numbers. Is, hey, man, this is going to have a rippling effect for centuries to come. Mm-hmm. It's it's a big deal. Sets that precedence. Yep. And he also spent years in the field on campaign against the barbarians. Right. It's always it's always good to be in person with your troops. Correct. I mean, if, even if you're not like fighting per se, just like seeing in person is really big morale. You're in the camp booster. with them. And yeah. Planning. Yep. Yeah. So in '82, as I said, he went up to Gaul for a census, but this was mainly a cover. He wanted some military glory. Yeah. So he formed a new legion, got them trained up, and struck out against the Chatai, which lived just across. Uh, the Roman border into, mm-hmm. you know, northern Germany. Suetonius calls this attack unjustified, which is saying something for Romans. Yeah, I mean, like, what, I mean, what expansion venture is quote unquote justified when you're like, no, 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 that land, I want it. That's Let's, mine now. We're going to go take it. You don't want us to take it, guys. We're going to kill you. Yep. 
So this new legion built over 46 miles or 75 kilometers of roads through this Chatai land mm. to help find mm-hmm. the hidden enemy because they were smart and didn't want to take on the legions in open combat. Right. Within a year, Domitian had announced victory. He returned to Rome for an elaborate triumph and gave himself the title of Germanicus, mm-hmm. which uh, many questioned. Yeah. Um, and they also questioned if the Chatai were truly defeated, as we saw. As they should. They weren't. So. Well, they tried to come back. Now, Agricola... <laughs> was up in Britain continuing the conquest. Mm -hmm. And by this time, modern England and Wales were mostly in line, but Ireland and Scotland were still barbarian. Agricola had arrived in 77 CE during Vespasian's reign, and he quickly campaigned into Caledonian land. Remember, that's Scotland. Yeah. The people were tricksy, though. They launched hit-and-run ambushes rather than offer battle. At some point, he likely crossed over to Ireland either to explore or prepare for a full-scale conquest. Mm. It's a little sketchy, though. Tacitus tells us all about his father-in-law, and Agricola often said a single legion and a few auxiliaries could conquer the whole of Ireland. Oh, boy. Yep. What a bold claim. Probably true, though. Like, if you you really committed, you probably could have, because it was sparsely populated. Yeah. Next, Agricola prepared another invasion of Caledonia. But in 84, again, this is in Domitian's reign, mm-hmm. he won the Battle of Mons Gropius against Colgacus. I'm just going to say <laughs> these right. the way I think they might have been <laughs> said. It was a solid victory, but a majority of the enemy army escaped the field, which mm-hmm. meant that Agricola couldn't fully occupy Caledonia. And then the following year, in 85, he was recalled by Domitian. Um, this is because they need more troops to help mm-hmm. fighting in the Danube region. At the same time, the settlements of Illyricum were constantly being harassed by the Swabi, the Sarmatians, and the Dacians, which is coming out of modern Romania. This was bad, but not the worst thing in the world. Skirmishes mm-hmm, happen all mm-hmm. the time. Raiding happens. Then King Decibalus stepped forward. This was a Dacian king. One day, King Decibalus decided that he'd really like to invade the empire. Right. So he did. Okay. In 85 CE, he crossed the Danube with a large army of Dacians. The governor of Moesia tried to hold them back, but was quickly defeated and killed in battle. Unfortunate. His legion was crushed along with him, and nobody kills Roman governors except Romans. That's right. So everyone's pissed, mm-hmm. and the fight was on. Domitian himself rushed toward the front with his Praetorian prefect, Fuscus. Fuscus was able to push the invasion force back in short time, and Domitian then went back to Rome to celebrate his second triumph. Okay. Good on him. Yeah, you know. Fuscus was confident and pushed uh, across the Danube to pursue the fleeing Dacians. In 86, his force was crushed. Pushed too far, huh? Yep. The Praetorian battle standard was lost. No, not the not the post. Yep, you can't Need lose it. that post with the eagle on Need it. Need it. It cannot be overstated how important those standards were to the Roman people and military. Um, mm-hmm. And this, losing any of them was terrible. Yeah. But this was the emperor's own guards. Mm-hmm. Really bad. That summer, Domitian uh, divided Moesia into two provinces for easier management of the war and called in three additional legions. This is why the fighting in Britain had to stop. Gotcha. Because oh, he was right, calling yeah. in more troops. We need the standard back. This is more important. So as a result of that, much of Agricola's gains were slowly lost, mm-hmm. which was very infuriating to the people. However, Domitian always saw Britain as a burden on the treasury more than anything else. And, you know, the people didn't like it couple hundred years from now they still will have felt that way britain was mm-hmm. a, yeah. a waste of resources never made a profit mm-hmm. and eventually the romans just left yes just one day we're like hey we need to leave mm-hmm. then like, didn't come not back. worth it and then 400 years of decline followed before like <laughs> modern feudal mm-hmm. everything pretty wild but domitian was seeing ahead and going huh that's a waste of time and money huh and then in 87 a new expedition invaded dacia under Tedius julianus Decibalus was defeated in late 88. This was uh, on the same site where Fuscus had been killed. Mm. So they kind of got their revenge. The legions were just about to push the Dacian capital when the Macromani and the Quadi started invading the Danube region. Ugh. I know. So many barbarians. There's so many tribes against us. There sure are. So, with that in mind, a deal was struck with Decibalus. He would become a client king with an annual pension of 8 million sesterces from Rome. Dang. And this infuriated contemporaries. A Roman governor and Praetorian prefect had been killed, and they Mm -hmm. wanted revenge. 
their honor had been tarnished and uh here he was just mm-hmm. signing a peace treaty but in hindsight it's fairly sensible you know it's a smart move right it's yeah. like what do you, you just want to keep fighting and losing more men and yeah. money like no. The next few years uh, saw a cleanup of the invasions. Chris Scar the men- uh, mentions there uh, may have been another war with the Sarmatians in his last year, but little is known about it. Um, he put down the rebellion of Saturninus in Upper Germania. Suetonius tells us Domitian wasn't there for the victory. He also says this about the rebellion. After Saturninus's rebellion, he banned legions from sharing camps and any soldier from depositing more than 10 gold pieces at headquarters, since the soldiers' savings held in the winter quarters of the two Rhine legions had helped fund the rebellion. Mm, right. So basically they have their own camp bank mm-hmm. and that was used to fund a rebellion. So, you know, he's doing smart things. Right. It just wasn't very popular. He was no great military mind. He mm-hmm. wasn't a Caesar. He wasn't his dad. He wasn't Titus. Right. But he was hands-on with all of his campaigns and was successful in pretty much everything. I mean, you lose some battles, sure. Yeah. But he he protected the border and pushed it back. With the exception of Fuscus being wiped out, mm-hmm. they did all right. He didn't lead from the front, but he was leading from the field. So, we have already raided this man. On yes, all of these have. fields from the last uh, uh, from the last time we recorded this, but I don't want to look at that. I'm right. curious how we're feeling today, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. at the end we'll we'll go through. So, out of ten, what do you think for mastery of military might for this oh, man? Oh man, it's a tough one. It is a tough one. He didn't have a lot. He didn't have like personal fighting skill. No, nope, but he was but leading in general. Yeah, he was there. He was there with them. You know, planning things. I'm thinking like a six. Yeah, right? Like pretty successful, but nothing spectacular. God, really smart moves, though, in terms of like just pulling back the invasion of Britain that just didn't make sense. And fortifying the Rhine. Yeah. Yep. Pretty smart. Pretty smart. We only have one decimal, don't we? Yeah, because you, you, you insisted yeah. that we have one. <laughs> We set the precedent and then never used it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I want, I don't know if a six is enough, but a seven might be too much. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I do. So you're thinking a 6.5? That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I'm thinking I know for a fact that'll be different than it last time. It will be, because I didn't so, use a decimal. Yeah. But I feel like we're in similar camps, though, yeah. between a six and a seven. So I'm going to go six, and you're going to go 6.5? Yeah. All right, bet. So that is 12 and a half for Mastery of Military Might for Domitian. He'd probably be pretty pissed because Titus would have gotten higher. And his dad got a perfect 20 out of 20. Yeah, ah, well, you know. His dad did a lot more and a lot more hands on. Right? He did. He did a good job with no real experience other than just stepping in and having to. Fair. All right. For sure. All right. Next. Terrible tyranny. He started a war. He had no reason to start against the Chatai. Right. Uh, but that's not really that tyrannical in the time of absolute monarchy. Is it tyranny for a uh, an absolute monarch to use his military? Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it's the people of, were kind of like, oh, what are you doing? Like, what do you mean unjust? This is what we do. This is we wrong. try to go conquer these areas. That's what yep. we've done forever. It is interesting that even, even back then, like, the term casus belli is uh like reason for war mm. and like it's a latin word or latin phrase like they also needed one they were usually right pretty flimsy reasons yeah but you still needed a reason yeah uh he stripped the senate of all the power and authority that they believed they held right so i guess quote unquote like tyranny and some big fat quotes there yeah you know yeah. like i mean he just said out loud what has been happening for the last hundred years he pointed at the elephant that was yeah. standing there the whole He's time like, guys look you don't do anything you haven't forever okay i'm in charge <laughs> uh this makes it very easy for the senators who are writing histories at the time to cast him in a very terrible right. light a little bias maybe uh, probably uh the empire had been a pseudo monarchy for mm-hmm. 100 years mm-hmm. the mission asserted that a fake senate was unnecessary but the facade of democracy is kind of what was holding it all together pretending that the Senate had power was the reason Augustus had done so well. Right. When they knew they didn't, but they kept pretending. Yeah. The Romans still hated kings. They somehow had themselves convinced that the (laughs) emperor was not a monarch and Rome was still a republic. 
uh, Domitian was known to quote this line from Homer, a host of leaders is no wise thing. Yeah. Meaning I'm in charge of no one else. You're right. Which, you know, it it does make sense. The saying too many cooks in the kitchen, you know, like what? You Very can't true. have all of these people, quote unquote, in charge at the same time of everything. Correct. Suetonius tells us that after the early years of generosity and niceness, Domitian's love for cruelty finally broke his mask. His wife may have had an affair with an actor named Paris. Uh, Paris had a pupil who mm. looked and acted a lot like Paris. Oh, boy. So Domitian had him executed. This is also why he may have uh, exiled his wife. Right. A man claimed a Thracian gladiator stood a chance to win his bout. Oh, yeah. So Domitian had the man thrown into the arena to be torn apart by dogs. Mm. This is, again, all coming from Suetonius. Right. So let's bear that in mind. Several senators were killed. Suetonius mentions three former consuls by name and that these were killed for plotting rebellion. Mm-hmm. The rest were for, quote, the most trivial of charges. So plotting okay. rebellion deserves execution, right? I would say. Yeah. And what these most trivial of charges were, we don't know. Doesn't say. Kind of convenient for him, huh? Yeah. Tacitus describes the reign of terror from 93 to 96 as such. Quote, the Senate house under siege, the senators hedged in by soldiers, and that one fell stroke that sent so many a consular to his death, so many a noble lady to exile or flight. And then Agricola's death is mm-hmm. described by Dio as this, quote, finally, he was murdered by Domitian for no other reason than this, jealousy, in spite of his having received triumphal honors from Titus. Yeah, I don't, okay. So at some know, point while he I had been brought that. home, Domitian was like, you know what? I'm going to kill Agricola. Yeah. He's just like, I'm just going to kill him. Yep. He deserves to die. Um, apparently, Domitian also killed a man for some joke he had made years prior. Ah. Some kind of jest. And then one day Domitian went, mm, no, that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that joke anymore. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I think you deserve to die. Pliny the Younger was a grown man throughout Domitian's reign. And he described the terror like this. Quote, a time when seven of my friends had been put to death or banished, so that I stood amidst the flames of thunderbolts dropping all around me, and there were certain clear indications to make me suppose a like end was awaiting me. Mm. So Pliny the Younger claims to have been fearful for his own life and having lost several friends to right. death or banishment. One of Otho's nephews had celebrated his uncle's birthday, mm-hmm. and he was killed. Obviously. Okay. <laughs> Can't celebrate the birthday of a former emperor. That's right. Dumb. Suetonius points out that it seems to be Saturninus's rebellion that set Domitian loose. Uh, after which he, quote, discovered a new form of inquisition, toasting the genitals and <laughs> severing the hands of his prisoners to discover the whereabouts of rebels in hiding. Wow. Yes. Seems he, pretty effective. Yeah. He also executed Titus Flavius Clemens. And Titus Flavius Sabinus. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Sabinus? The name a little bit. That's Vespasian's brother. Oh, okay. The uncle who protected Domitian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's super annoying that the sons all get the same damn name as their dads. (laughs) Uh, This Titus Flavius Sabinus is the grandson of Domitian's uncle. Okay. So still some sort of cousin. Yeah, something. Um and this Sabinus was consul with Domitian mm-hmm. in 82 CE. So Domitian had made him consul yeah. with him. Want to guess the reason for the executions of these two? I don't know, man. Do they celebrate a birthday or something too? Worse. This- Sabinus, <laughs> during his worse. consulship, uh, apparently when a herald had announced him, mm-hmm. had accidentally said imperator. Oh, that's right. Instead yeah. of consul. How dare you? And then Clemens was executed for atheism, apparently. Okay. Yeah. Which is strange because their whole thing was, you can worship any gods you want. Right. That's totally cool. Yeah. You don't worship any gods? You okay, get you over You don't here. worship anyone? You have to die. Give, give me your head. <laughs> Suetonius, again, quote, said, he always prefaced his most vicious punishments with a speech of clemency until the most certain sign of a cruel end was the leniency of the preamble. Mm. So if, if you were going to die... He was really nice to you. And if he wasn't going to kill you, he tormented you into thinking oh, you he was. Good. That sounds fun. 
Yeah, his steward was summoned to his bedchamber to hang out for the evening, have drinks, mm-hmm, you know, just mm-hmm, relax, mm-hmm. Uh, put his mind at ease, right. sent him away. And then the next Kill day, him. the steward was crucified. <gasps> yeah. Um, there's also a story that I don't know how true it is about a black dinner where he invited a bunch mm. of senators and everything was black. The food was black. The room was black. Interesting. And just kept making references to like, you know, <laughs> I can, you know, people can die. And, yeah. yeah. Weird, and then had um, hooded men follow them home. Oh, okay. And then they were, wow. they were fine. They were like Some a pretty strong mind games right there. Yeah. So who knows how much of that is true, but still pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Um, he gave senators consulships, but perhaps this was a ploy to ruin their reputations and find excuses for exiles and executions. Um, okay. After his death, his memory was damned to oblivion by the Senate. Mm-hmm. Well, it, yeah, that makes sense, no matter how it went. Right, yeah, yeah. They, they were not fans. He reportedly killed less noblemen than Claudius, but Claudius maintained the facade of senatorial power, so uh, Domitian's memory was far more tarnished. Yeah. And remember, Augustus killed a ton of senators. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. So it really comes down to perception, mm-hmm. um, how many survivors liked him and how many didn't. Because, like, Augustus killed everyone who didn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone who did like him just kept writing about him. So Naturally. So that's what I've got. Um, it's, this, it's this weird thing of he seems like a great administrator that the Senate did not like at all, who did probably a, a few pretty bad things. Yeah. But not a Caligula. No. Not a Nero. No. Just kind of a, definitely a tyrant in some regards, but not an all out madman. So what do we think for a terrible tyranny? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to hover around like a six, I think, still. Think so? Yeah, probably. Well, I guess, right? Because like, what would a five be? Is a five just like an average person? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to our say. Because, well, what I would say is like, it'd be really hard to get a zero as a monarch. Right. There's Sometimes you just got to do some things. Right. You know? So I would say, you know, like if you're a fairly benevolent ruler who had a few maybe sketchy executions or something, mm-hmm. you know, that's a one or a two. And then if you're, you know, killing a few more people than it's probably necessary, you're getting into that five region. And then you got Caligula at 10. Right. Nero, right. I think we gave like a 14 I total. Couldn't, couldn't remember. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe a five then. You think five? You probably get, got a little paranoid near the end. Yeah. But... It's hard, right? Which stories are actually true and which ones aren't? It's always, yeah, that's going to always be the case, particularly while we're in these ancient mm-hmm. times. It gets a little mm-hmm. bit better when there's a lot yeah. more writing. I'll, st- I'll stick at a five, I think. Yeah. Um, you want to go less, don't you? No, I think I want to go slightly oh, more. Really? Maybe. I think I'm going to go six. Okay. And give them an 11. Okay. So that is 11 for Terrible Tyranny. Lives of the Living. Like Augustus, uh, Domitian wanted to raise the moral standards of the empire. The ancient customs of the Roman pantheon were strictly enforced. Uh, Domitian spent great deals of money on restoration of temples of Jupiter, as well as new shrines to the deity. Uh, it was very important to him that this like kind of all-powerful god kind of represented mm-hmm, him, mm-hmm. you know. He banned the creation of eunuchs which is the castrating of boys yep. and sometimes men. So that's good. Seems pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty horrible thing. Um, sometime we may go into detail on what a eunuch is because they become more and more important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, senators who partook in homosexual relations were punished, which is interesting because, yeah. again, it used to be okay so long as you right. were the top. He condemned four of the six Vestal Virgins to death. Not good. He took a severe, this is a quote from Suetonius, sorry. He took a severe view of unchastity among the Vestal Virgins, though it had been condoned even by his father and brother, putting offenders to death at first in a conventional, but later in the ancient manner. Mm. So what that means is three of these uh, women were found guilty of incest, which seems odd. Seems to be a high number of incest amongst a very small group of virgins. Mm -hmm. Um, they were given the chance to choose their manner of execution, which was is what Suetonius means by conventional. How oh, nice. And then a decade later, the chief Vestal was found guilty of many affairs. She was buried alive while her lovers were beaten to death in the forum. And this is the traditional form of execution that Suetonius mentioned. This goes back to ancient times. Being buried alive sounds fucking awful. Yeah, it doesn't sound great at all. Yeah. This was entirely legal for Domitian to do, but obviously very uh, strong Mm -hmm. sign to the Senate as well, because uh, most of the vessels came from senatorial families. Right. 
So he was showing like, hey, you guys screw up. I will kill you. Mm -hmm. So that could go into tyranny too, but it also affects the lives of the living. Yeah. By most accounts, he was a very able administrator. The economy was doing very well. He increased the percentage of silver in their coins from 90% to 98% in 82. However, by 85, the amount had to be brought back down to 93 93.5%. But it, that's still the highest it's been mm -hmm. in a long time and the highest it will ever be for like ever. Yeah. It will only go down from there. And I am not an economist and don't understand fully the ramifications of that, but it's very important in history. Mm -hmm. Even those who hate him have to admit that corruption was at its lowest point ever. Which is wild. Suetonius, again, I'm using him lots because he'll be mm -hmm. gone after this. Quote, he was so strict in his control of the city officials and provincial governors that there has never been a greater display of honesty and justice. Did I read that quote earlier? Couldn't tell you. Anyway, Suetonius tells us he was just, free of greed, and generous in his early reign. He gives examples of good laws related mm -hmm, to lawsuits mm -hmm. and the treasury. He continued the restoration of buildings from the last two fires in the city. He also built temples and shrines and the Forum of Nerva. A couple of provinces were being hit hard by bar barbarian invasion, but this was not empire-wide, and Domitian mm -hmm. did a good job of mitigating the damage and pushing the threat back into their own lands. He put on a lot of mock naval battles in the arena and in bays, and even built an artificial lake for, their, for this purpose. He added two teams to the chariot races. Uh, so for a long time, there were four teams who raced in the circus. Mm -hmm. And the circus is the uh, oval-shaped yeah. arenas that they would run chariots in. These teams were the reds, whites, blues, and greens. These teams were everything mm -hmm. to most of the Romans. Think of the con cultural significance of modern football, soccer, to right. many countries. People live and die mm -hmm. for their teams, quite literally. Uh, we're, we're just recently out of, I believe it was in Mexico where like 17 people were beaten to death after a game. <laughs> yeah. So think of that. That is what these people feel about these teams. The blues and greens are generally the most important ones in history. Several hundred years from this point, Justinian mm. will be dealing with these teams Okay. in Constantinople. Yeah. Uh, and they get only more powerful. So Domitian added the golds and the purples, okay. which is, you actually mentioned last, I mm -hmm. said, I'm not sure why, but you yeah. mentioned last time that those are royal colors. Right. Yeah. So, the purple being royalty for and sure. And then gold being money. So yeah. yeah, good points. They didn't last long. Um, I couldn't find a reason why he made them and why they went away, but it was a, it was a big deal. It was probably just propaganda, a mm -hmm. ploy to win popular support. And then it went away. He put on the secular games in 88 CE. Ah, yes. The once every 100 years, yeah? Hey, there you go. The big, the big joyous games. Let's go. Yep. So these games were designed to be held once in the longest possible human lifespan, mm, which they assumed yes. was 100 years, mm -hmm. which made sense back then. Very few people lived that long. <laughs> yeah. So the idea was nobody would be alive who had been alive during the last games. Mm -hmm. That was why these were so big. Um, Encyclopedia Britannica says the earliest known Roman celebration was in 249 BCE. So, you know, 200 years before Augustus was right. even a blip. And then again in 146 BCE, so 103 years later. The last one was held under Augustus in 17 BC. Kind of. Claudius had tried to claim it was time for the games in 47 CE, which... Uh, lots of people laughed at because that's yeah. only about 50 years. They're like, nah, man, we're still here. <laughs> uh, we, so my grandma saw the last ones. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, so Claudius just looked like a fool for doing this. But now Domitian could truly mm -hmm. host the new games because it had been 100 years since Augustus's games. Um, in 88 CE, they had three days and three nights of partying and worshiping the gods. Woo! Huge celebration. Big time good stuff. His government was a meritocracy for the most part. Mm -hmm. Quote from Suetonius, he opened the most important court positions restricted to senators to freedmen and knights, which is good for a lot of people and bad for a lot of senators. That's right. Yep. And now I've got a few things under my list of cons. The higher ranking class were feeling less and less good about themselves. Uh, he was a difficult man to work for. He had mm -hmm. no warmth or charisma, just calculated efficiency and autocracy. There may have been a reign of terror. But it would not have hit the common people. Mm -hmm. He wasn't slaughtering in a, right. in like the civilians. He was dealing with uh, unruly leaders. Mm -hmm. um, moral standards were high and being strictly enforced, which is, you know, depending on your viewpoint, kind of rough. Yeah, right. 
And Suetonius tells us he taxed the Jews very highly. Quote, I remember in my youth being present as a 90-year-old man was examined in front of the procurator in a densely packed courtroom to prove whether he had been circumcised. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the Jews were getting the the rough end of it Mm -hmm. quite a bit, which probably stems from having grown up during the Great Jewish Revolt. Yeah. A lot of resentment. And, you know, that's why his dad and his brother were gone. Mm -hmm. Not making any excuses for it, but... yeah. So that is what I've got. What do you think about lives of the living? The you've got an empire beset on multiple sides by barbarian invasion, but held out all right. The economy's doing pretty well. We're gonna go with a solid seven. I was also thinking me. a seven. Solid seven. Yeah. He's doing a good job. Some of the people don't like some of the things he's doing, so I guess that's the influence, but I think a seven's good. I think yep. a seven is adequate. So uh that would be a fourteen. For Lives of the Some Living. Now, let's move on to the fun one. Mm-hmm. Departed Demise. How you die, son? Yep. So as I mentioned, Domitian had executed Titus Flavius Clemens. Mm-hmm. Now, this was a big deal because the man's sons were essentially the right. heirs. And he was also an ex-consul and mm-hmm. cousin to mm-hmm. Domitian. Mm-hmm. So you've got kinslaying. You've got, uh, you know, ex-consuls, the highest anyone can yep. get except aside from uh, emperor. Mm-hmm. Not good. After the execution... Clemens' widow, Domitilla, was exiled. Mm. However, her steward, Stefania, or Stephanus, yes, Stephanus, stayed on at court. Maybe not the best call. Yeah. By this point, those closest to the emperor were in fear for their lives. His innate paranoia and anxiousness uh, were getting kind of over the edge. Right. He was on a killing spree that did not seem to slow. Then, some of his attendants found a list. Hmm. The list of names of people to be executed. Oh, no. And on the list were the attendants' names. Mm. Even the Empress feared her husband and joined up with the Imperial Chamberlain and Stephanus to hatch a plan. Somehow, they evaded the highly suspicious eye of Domitian and the Praetorians. In September of 96 CE, Domitian was getting increasingly paranoid. Mm -hmm. He had a dream of Minerva appearing to tell him Jupiter had disarmed her so she could no longer protect the emperor. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Imagine being that scared. Like, Jupiter's coming for me? Shit. Dang, the gods can't even keep me safe anymore. (sighs) Horrible. He also heard a fortune that he would die at midday. Mm. As a result, he was extra wary and on edge until the afternoon and evening times. Security in the palace complex was heightened. Everyone Mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. checked for weapons and poisons. One court official fell and hurt his wrist, requiring thick bandages, mm-hmm. and those had to be checked daily, despite the pain right. it caused the man. Well, you can't hide something in there, so... Right. On September 18th, 96 CE, Domitian was anxious. He repeatedly asked one of his attendants what time it was. He could feel death reaching for him. He was certain it was around noon. But the attendant patiently informed him once again that it was, in fact, late afternoon. Domitian, as usual, had worked himself hard and lost track of time. There you go. It's afternoon. You can't die now. Finally, at ease, Domitian sat back for his chambers to finish up some paperwork. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The man was rarely idle and had his hands in everything. Mm-hmm. A guard approached him from the front, of course, because you never approach right. him from behind. He informed the emperor that a court official had information about a plot to assassinate the dun, emperor. Dun, dun. He summoned the man to his chambers. In walks the man, a steward, as he recalls, former steward to Domitilla. Oh, no. And his arm is wrapped in thick bandages from a fall the previous week. He introduces himself as Stephanos. <gasps> As always, Domitian wants things kept straight to the mm-hmm, point. No mm-hmm. fluff or flowery language. Just get on with it. What information do you have on the plot? Stefano steps closer, subconsciously holding his injured arm with his good hand. You have been betrayed, Stefano says. And suddenly he rips a blade from the bandages By and me. stabs the emperor. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> a struggle ensues. Uh, Dom, Domitian was no slouch mm-hmm. and fights back. Uh, if you've ever seen, uh, you haven't, but if anyone right. has ever seen statues of the man, he's not small. Mm-hmm. He is stabbed several times, but wrestles Stephanos to the floor, desperately fighting for the mm-hmm. dagger, but he's growing weak. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, as blood, blood is, loss will do yeah, that to you. Blood loss will do that to you. <laughs> Finally, he hears the guards burst and he can hear their shouting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as the running footsteps approach, it is clear that help has not arrived for Domitian. Oh, no. He is set upon by more men, senators and knights and his own guards. They hack him to pieces and he dies on the chamber floor. 
his worst fears have come true. He reigned from 81 to 96 CE. It's very Caesar-esque death. Yeah. <laughs> a little like a little cooler though cuz he was expecting it and right. still happened. Yeah. So what do you think? I really like this one. It's, it's a good one. And I obviously embellished it a little, but mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. Was this in his room of mirrors too? He had room he had mirrors all around the corridors. Oh, okay. So, so this was in his chambers. Oh, okay. Yep. Dumb. Where he thought he was safe. You need to have mirrors everywhere, my guy. Well, I don't know that a mirror would have helped. He was looking at the man. <laughs> Correct. I'm just saying <laughs> it's an oversight. Yeah, I'm I'm assassinations are just top tier and this is a really cool mm-hmm. one so i'm thinking a 10 fought a 10 he fought i mean caesar didn't caesar even fight 10. and he got yeah, a 10 well i mean he fought back he wasn't he wasn't ready for it <laughs> and 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 he was ready for it yeah i'm giving him a 10 i'm definitely not giving him a 10 okay we'll just we'll just sit at a nine You're thinking a nine yeah all right so that is a 19 for departing demise on to the next. Lasting Legacy. So the Lasting Legacy. So Domitian is the first emperor to be facing mass incursion from barbarians. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not going to end. Right. This is going to carry on. And he fought back. He yeah, held he them held back them bay. Yeah. Uh, he got a new client king in the mm-hmm. Dacians, which is big. He held the secular games, which is big. Right. After this, uh, I looked into it because I was like, huh, I wonder how long that... I- they started doing it like every 20 years and then... Oh, the game? The, yeah. the secular games? Yeah. Okay. It's just, it became like a ploy instead of like a proper gotcha. every yeah, 100 yeah, yeah. years. But, you know, what are you going to do? He was the last of his dynasty. Mm-hmm. The Flavians are no more after this. Um, he had increased soldier pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, this will have a very slow snowball effect f- over the coming centuries. Yeah. Um, you've heard me talk about the crisis of the third century. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That has a lot to do with this, <laughs> and that's a uh, hundred years from now, but it is this is what starts it. He is most remembered for being a mad tyrant who just loved being cruel, which is wild because yeah, doesn't really seem like that. Yeah, he was the first emperor to truly stamp down on the Senate's assumed power. Mm-hmm. He let them know he was not interested in what they had to say. And it does seem that he was a bit paranoid, especially in his later reign. A few failed conspiracies later, and he's executing some major threats. But not in mass. Right. Again, Claudius killed more. Then his death led directly into the Golden Age. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So some could argue that he helped start the Golden Age. Yeah, I would say he definitely placed the Empire in the position like of stability to start right. that Golden Age. For sure. Um, the five good emperors will now follow, or mm-hmm. Nerve uh, and the five and the four good emperors, as you I mean call it. Boring. <laughs> kind of <laughs> yeah i'm worried about it we'll see how interesting we can make them um these men didn't inherit a crisis from right. Domitian. yeah they walked into a, a really solid empire mm-hmm. and maybe it's so solid that they're ready for a little more expansion question mark sure. dot trajan yeah yeah we'll, we'll see. see question mark dot trajan <laughs> so yeah that that's his legacy um he built some stuff too mm-hmm. pretty good uh it's weird because he's he's not Nero, he's not Caligula, but he's viewed like that. Yeah, I want I mean, it was probably pretty biased. Yeah. He made a very strong stance of senators don't do anything. They suck. You don't have power. Correct. So, it's pretty pretty hard to take all of uh, all of the negative at face value. Right. And I will say, you know, obviously we're at the point now where your average person has not heard of most of these emperors mm-hmm. we're going to discuss. Yeah. So you can't look at it quite as in the same light as Caesar and Augustus because yeah. everyone's heard of them. But he has a lasting legacy, um, good and bad, mm-hmm. that carries on to this day. So I think I want to give him like a seven. Yeah. Yeah, I was sitting at a seven. Okay. So that is a 14 for mm-hmm. lasting mm-hmm. legacy. Mm-hmm. Not bad, my guy the great and that brings us to our final point we're going to give him an epithet mm, so that's right first oh, question man, remember how he, it's good i can't remember what we decided on last time yeah does he deserve the great i don't, I think, don't so. think so no i mean like if he didn't go a little crazy in the end and like could really have started the golden age maybe mm-hmm. but yeah 
think he fell just a little short. Yeah, he didn't do anything spectacular enough. He didn't save. He right. wasn't his father. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go with no on the great. Mm-hmm. And now we got to think of a, a nickname for him. And I know the one that we came up with, and I think we're probably going to stick with it, but I, I have just a few. So uh, Domitian the fly catcher. Yeah, <laughs> just because of that dumb quote. <laughs> uh, the misunderstood, which is fairly true. Yeah. The autocrat or the absolute. Mm. And then the one we actually went with was the forgotten. Yeah. Because yeah. it's very true. And you had actually suggested this one, I think, originally. Mm-hmm. And it it's it's interesting because he's the forgotten tyrant of of rome right because no, yeah. no one really In heard history, of him yeah and then he's also the forgotten son yeah yeah just left so behind always we good with we good with the forgotten yeah, i want to keep it that perfect so Domitian the forgotten you are not the great now i'm curious let's compare what we had said last time about um his score versus oh, this time yeah <laughs> see how consistent or inconsistent it is so Domitian the forgotten mastery of military might initially mm-hmm. we actually gave him a bit lower so okay. I had said well, five, you had said six. This time I said six, you said 6.5. Yep. So do we want to stick with our new score or our original score? Oh, we're sticking with the new scores, baby. All right. So we're six not going back. 6.5. Okay. We just give it a second thought. Terrible tyranny. Wow. We're going up on yeah. all of these. <laughs> so I had said five, you had said four. And this mm. time it was six and five. Yeah. So I said five. Yeah. I said five. You said time. five this time. Yep. So we both went up by one. Yeah. <laughs> Lives of the living, we went down. We both said eight last time, and this time we said seven. Well, what so are you going to do? we're balancing out. And departing demise, you did give him a 10 the first time. Well, that's too bad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go. You gave him a nine. I gave him a 10. So that's 19. And lasting legacy. Wow. Uh, okay. Uh, I had said five. You had said six. Wow. This time you we, both s- we both said seven. seven. Yeah. Yeah. Changed our mind. Well, seems like the second go round was a lot more convincing. Right. Wow. He's higher than his dad. He's higher than his dad now. Well, it's probably mostly for the tyranny. Let's see. Uh, that and his departing demise. Yeah. His dad just his died dad a natural was death. Nuts. Like, he's just an old yeah. man. He just died. You're like, all right, cool. <laughs> he, well, the thing was, um, he still got a, Vespasian still got a 14 on departing demise because his death was interesting. Like, he had like two famous last words. And oh, yeah. Everything. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, 70.5 for Domitian. 70.5. What Which, was it before? Did you already delete it? I Yeah, I just It was went probably mid 60s. Less. It was, yeah. yeah, upper 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I hit it. I think I guessed. Which one did I guess correctly? I guess I think one it was of them is spot on, but I don't remember. 67 because yeah, it, I'm pretty sure it matched Caligula. Okay. I'm I mean, pretty sure that's what right. happened. I mean, it's still pretty close. They're, they're very similar. Yeah. So, not bad. Domitian, uh, the Forgotten, mm-hmm. has done uh, pretty well given given his status. Yeah, and if you consider everything, he did a wonderful job. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Just just kind of lost to history because he's in the middle of a lot of great men. Yeah, like everything else of history, the what ifs, if he was actually given some trust and responsibility and brought up to like have the education of a leader and ruler. Right. Definitely. What if? Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Hope you enjoyed. Sorry for the long delay. Yeah, but, maybe uh, this one will actually work. You yeah, know? if it doesn't, I might just cry. Oh yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be rough. <laughs> yeah, if it, if <laughs> it this is all crackly when we're time. done, I might just say, well, I guess we're not doing a podcast anymore. Yeah, <laughs> like all right, man, we're gonna take a couple months off, but hopefully not. We should be good. But uh, I don't know if I should announce this, but I'm excited about it. Uh, one of our buddies that we game with has a 3D printer. Let's go. And um, I wanted to make like a great wall mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. the people that we give the title of the great to. So as of now, he is going to start 3d printing busts of caesar augustus and vespasian let's go and i'm going to put them up on my wall and then maybe maybe put pictures of it up i would the, imagine yeah you website. can update it on the website yeah, yeah. so the great leave comments if you guys want to wherever you're listening and then we will read them out we haven't gotten any yet but we'll get there thank Eventually. you guys so much for listening as always we love you okay bye let's babble a great day all <laughs> right man we got man, stuff to, to do be there. honest i i did 
A lot of it was hazy, right? The memories were there, but oh. it was fairly new. Hi, Winnie. Thanks Jesus. for hitting the... D- wow. You know what? Good on you for waiting the entire podcast yeah. before making a single noise. Good job, Winnie. Proud <laughs> of you. What's our time? What's our time? I said 138. What's our recording 128. time? 128.57. dang it. Yeah, I got a lot shorter.